Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. Today's video isn't going to be a channel. It's going to be an update, a conversation, where I'm gonna share with you a little bit about what's been, what it's been like to do these channeling sessions with these famous dead people. Because, you know, dead people seem to give really great advice. I hope you've enjoyed um, the variety of channels that I've offered. So let's talk a little bit about that up to this point. I want to reflect it, reflect with you. So I definitely have some favorites, some spirits from the afterlife that I've connected with that just have such sweet, gentle, loving energy. And you clearly would know who they are if you've watched all the videos so far. And there's a couple of months worth now of videos we've been, we've been uh, sharing here at Above Life Channel. And thank you for watching. I should say thank you, give you gratitude, give you some love. There you go. Do you feel that? I hope so. <laughs> I appreciate you watching. Um, so definitely loved Elvis. I have just adored his energy. I have recorded several videos with him now because he's just so great to connect with. And I really, really enjoy it. Really enjoy it very much. Totally one of my favorites. Um, yeah, I have enough to record lots of videos with him. I also really enjoyed talking to Elizabeth Taylor. I did one video with her. She was sassy and fun and kind of really had this like confident woman energy vibe. And like I could have been friends with her, but you kind of got to watch your back with her a little bit. But I like there's a confidence that I like. I'm like, yeah, interesting. So I really liked her. And I definitely liked George Michael, but I've only chatted with him just very briefly. Like he's not a man of many words. Like he's not super chatty. He's somebody that you could maybe have drinks with on the patio and then get to know and just laugh and share funny stories with. Like that's the kind of person he felt like to me. Very generous, loved, like loved animals. Um, just very caring, you know, had a lot of struggles in his life, but just, it didn't make him like a jerk. It didn't make him a jerk, you know? He's just very, very sweet. And I've only done, I think, maybe one video with him. I have, a, I think, an audio also with him, but I should talk with him again because he's really sweet, but I just don't know what to say. Like, I don't know what I chat with him about. Um, but George Michael, very nice, very nice. Robin Williams, one of my very favorites. Such a interesting depth of wisdom that he brings forward, very insightful. And he's fun to be around, but he's not like over, overly funny. I wouldn't say that's the thing that draws me to Robin Williams. I would say the insight, like he's got a lot of wisdom. Like I couldn't even imagine having the opportunity to be an actor or an actress around him and his energy, just learning from him as a person, not just as an actor, but he loved acting so much. He just embodied the very opportunity to act was like just being close to God for him. I mean, he just felt so good in the energy around other actors and stuff. And I, I couldn't even imagine how incredible that would feel just to be around him, you know, that energy. And so he's very insightful, very much wisdom. And there will be other conversations I will have with him. I don't know how many I've shared yet, but I've recorded a few. So, all right. Um, Marilyn Monroe. At the time that I'm sharing this video, you haven't seen, I don't think you've seen it yet. I don't think I shared it yet. Awesome. I actually did a special style of channeling that I do called transformative channeling. That's what I call it. And that transformative um, channel, that trans channel, T-R-A-N-S dash channel, I did with Marilyn and where I share space. So she can utilize um, my body energy to have expression and be creative and so I really my physical body just responds to their energy and how they are so the gestures and the mannerisms and the facial features and things um, totally her and it was so fun to do that one so fun so fun and I've talked to her twice I have one that I'm gonna share with you guys um, here I have another one that's kind of behind the scenes where like it was a super surprise spontaneous channel so i did not expect to channel her and so i wasn't really like it's pretty raw like i hadn't even like i had my jammies on let me just be clear I had my pjs on and like no makeup i mean it's just not really like a public like, hey let's share this <laughs> kind of video it just happened because it was spontaneous um 
I was just doing my transformative channeling and I was doing um, my practicing of my transformative channeling, which I always do with Prince. Um, he's the one that I, when I trans channel, again, it's not trance, like I don't own oh, into a different space or anything like they don't, they don't possess me. It's not like that. It's like a different energy share space. It's kind of in front. It's like the etheric field, not internally in my body. I still am connected fully into my body, but I kind of step back. I sit back in a chair in the back and then I can just step in or I step, sit off to the side and I can just step in. But it, Prince is the one that I trans channel with a lot. And so I was trans channeling with Prince and then Marilyn came in instead of Prince. And it was like, what? I mean, it was just so, it was very strange. It was interesting. It was good though, but anyway, so that's that. And of course, Prince, I mean, the reason why I do Above Life Channel was because I have been channeling with Prince for two years and I've been sharing that um, as the Purple Medium. I have a Facebook page called the Purple Medium that is, that is really connected to my psychic work and um, honors the energy that Prince brings forward. I mean, it sounds kind of strange maybe in your mind to rationalize how uh, somebody so famous that's like a musician and that I have like nothing in common with, that you maybe don't have anything in common. Like I don't play instruments. I didn't go to Paisley Park when he was alive. I didn't, you know, it's hard to kind of rationalize how somebody like that could have such a a spiritual teacher, mentor, healer, helper, guide role. But that's what happens when someone really um, very well known that a lot of people are connected to in some kind of energy way, even if you're not aware of it, even if you're not a mega fan, you don't have to be a fan, but it can impact you. They're leaving the earth and becoming a full spirit can totally impact you because it like something that you're connected to in the energy with that former person opens up to you when that person ascends and becomes full on spirit, you just, you open up and you're like, oh my gosh. And then you notice, wait a minute, that person that I'm connecting to isn't really a person anymore. They're just spirit. But why am I so connected to Prince or this person, famous person? I didn't know them as a person. And now I'm like on this spiritual journey and I'm interested in intuition and I'm feeling energy and I'm really sad that he's gone and I didn't get to know him as a person. But part of that is because you feel a connection with that energy as a spirit and what they represent in the afterlife, which for Prince, for many, he's like a healer. He's got an incredible, empowering healing energy. He just does. Very, he can be so peaceful, um, so just fill you with so much love. Like there's a ton of love that comes with him and um, self-love and compassion for yourself is kind of his message, you know, and be yourself, be yourself. What, what do you need to do to be yourself is his message, which is I think what ha has made me so um, in tune with his energy because that's part of the message that I've always had in my work, you know, be who you is, not who you ain't. And so there's a lot of reasons why we connect with people after they become full on spirit where we maybe didn't even really notice them in human life. It's just this thing that happens to us. We awaken, a part of us awakens as they transcend. Okay. All right. So those are some of the people, former people that I've chatted with that I really enjoyed, um, really enjoyed chatting with. Now there are a few and that I've chatted with where there's one in particular that I talked to. There's two actually. There's one that I haven't shared because I don't, I think I need to talk to her again in order to get a more of a well-rounded picture to present to you. I, it can't just be one video. The first video I did, it just didn't, it felt like there was, we danced around topics. We didn't really dig in. So I'd like to have a couple to be able to share with you. And so I need more information from her and her energy was confusing to me. And I felt like I didn't really know her. Like there was a personal persona or personal kind of I, professional, like I was presenting, she was presenting something, but it wasn't really totally accurate kind of thing. Um, just the different way you present yourself, you know? And so I think you need to talk to her again. And that was Judy Garland. I definitely need to speak with her again. She's originally from Minnesota. Um, another um, energy that I spoke with that was tough to channel was most certainly was River Phoenix. And I gotta be real, real upfront with you guys. That was tough because, I mean, the energy was heavy at first and stuff too. Um, and I did a, a channel with him and a follow up with him to just talk a little bit about how it felt to channel him. Um, it doesn't mean that he's like 
having trouble in the afterlife or that he's not crossed over. It's not like that. He's totally crossed over. But it's not like he's like tormented or a ghost or it's nothing like that. He's not, he's not, he's totally, he's okay. There's peace there, right, you guys? Don't worry about that. But apparently River Phoenix has a ton of fans and some of those fans are really intense and have a very strong views about how he died and why he died. And I got a ton of YouTube comments that were so not good energy vibes on the River Phoenix stuff especially. And so I'm like, whoa, that stirred up a whole nest of stuff that I don't want to touch. So yucky. And that was tough. I got to be honest. It was really hard for me to even want to come back and channel after that week because it wasn't doing the videos for him, but it was because of the comments on YouTube that I got. And I understand that people are gonna have different perspectives or views than I do, and that's totally fine. That's fine. And people will share stuff, and that's fine. I mean, that's okay, right? Um, but there's some creepy stuff that has shown up on so comments for some of um, the stuff that was related to uh, River Phoenix particularly. There's There was a couple of creepy things with Michael Jackson too. And I know that those fans are really intense as well. And so I've had to really monitor the, the comments more than I kind of thought. I was like, what? I mean, some people really are like, really not. It's just, wow, it was, it was really yucky. Let's just say that it was really yucky and not something I'm gonna deal with. So anyway. And it wasn't like a tax on me personally. I mean, I get some of that too. I mean, that's just part of doing stuff like this. Some people really disagree and they're like, uh, get really mad. I'm like, well, why do you watch then? Don't watch. You don't have to watch my channel. Nobody's making you. So I don't know. I get some of that too, but that doesn't really bother me. That's just normal stuff. But the, the people that I'm channeling, if they are really controversial, like with Michael Jackson, because he is controversial. Let's be clear, he just is. And I channel him, and I channel him pretty easily, and I don't mind his energy, and I feel like, um, I feel like, uh, I mean, I definitely will continue to channel him. I don't have a problem with that. But um, it can be, a bit of a deterrent to want to do channeling. I mean, it really can be. So I have to just kind of manage who I'm channeling and when and make keep it so that it is fun for me and enjoyable for me because that's the important thing. That's why I do Above Life Channel because I love it. I love it. I love to channel. And so I'm stretching myself by getting out of my comfort zone and, and talking to dead people that I have no idea who they are. And some of that isn't always roses and cherries you know there's some interesting and deep stuff but as long as there's a point there's got to be a message for you there's got to be something that can change your life in a positive way and really inspire you and give you hope that those are the two things that i have requirements for it's got to inspire you and give you hope that's the goal that's the outcome that i strive for when i do channeling and that's what I'm committed to. And so so that's how that's how it's been going. That's how it's gone at this point. Oh, I have to share too. I also really enjoyed talking to Buddy Holly. So sweet, such a sweet guy. And it turns out that where the plane crash, the day the music died, with those three, the Richie Valens and Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper, um, the plane crash site is actually only about two hours from my house. It's in Iowa and I live in Minnesota. And so my husband and I, I think, are going to take a trip in the next couple of months, a road trip down and um, check it out and actually do some video there. And I'm gonna feel the energy and see if I can connect at all on the geographic site just to see how that um, if that would be a factor for me or if I can share that with you I'd like to do that not to be morbid and not to focus on death that's not the point of this channel it's not about death it's about life it's about life and the point of life is to live it and that's why I say at the end of my videos remember it's your life live it because that's the message that's the point right thank you again Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the videos. If you could make